On this edition of Around BCC, BCC makes a concerted effort to get high school dropouts back into the classroom. BCC's New Bedford campus continues to grow. We have the story of the return of a long-lost BCC class ring, and our alum of the month used BCC to take her love of baking into creating her own business. Happy New Year! Welcome to Around BCC. I'm Keith Tebow. We are on a semester break at Bristol Community College with the spring semester beginning later on this month. But there's still a lot going on and there's still some positions that need to be filled in terms of some classes. BCC, over a year ago now, uh, started a new program which looked at getting students who left their high school years to come back to school and not only earn their high school diplomas, but also get them started, getting them started on their college careers. And there are two programs that BCC is affiliated with, one out of New Bedford called Middle College and one out of the Fall River uh, campus called Gateway to College. And we're going to talk about those two programs today. I have four guests with me this month. I have uh, to my immediate left is Eric Bauman. He's the director of the Gateway program in Fall River. Frank Romanelli, who's the director of Middle College in New Bedford, and two students that are in the program, Patrick Peters, who is in the uh, Middle College program in New Bedford, and Omaida Montanez, who is in the program here in Fall River. Thank you all for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Let me start with Eric and, and, and Frank. Frank, actually, let me start with you. Middle right. College actually started uh, about a year and a half ago. It was the fall semester of 2011. Um, talk about what the program entails, and it's the same for Gateway, but how, what it basically entails and how successful has it been in getting students who have left school to come back. Now, in, in New Bedford, again, the middle college program started in uh, the fall of 2011. Gateway actually started in January of 2012, about a year ago, mm -hmm. actually, as we speak. Um, how successful has it been? How many graduates do we have, high school graduates? And maybe how many of those have maybe gone on to college and hopefully stayed at BCC? We had five graduates in June from New Bedford High School. Great. Uh, the f one of the graduates actually finished in the first semester. So he is going into a music career, so he hasn't opted to be in college at this time. Mm -hmm. The other four all opted to college. One took a break um, for family reasons and is coming in in January full-time. The other three are full-time BCC students. Wow, two of them, one of them is here as an art student in Fall River. The other two are in New Bedford. They're also task trained. Um, they were task trained this summer by Dr. Weisberger. So they tutor for the campus at New Bedford and also in our program. Mm -hmm. All right, Eric, um, how similar or different is Gateway? We have very similar programs. Um, <clears throat> Gateway is, uh, and the model that we're using in both Gateway and Middle College is part of a larger national network. Um, there's approximately 30, over 30 other Gateway programs across the nation. Uh, it started out in Portland Community College, out in Portland, Oregon. Um, and so there's a lot of similarities. There's a lot of collaboration between myself and Frank. Um, and we have, um, you know, very similar goals, very similar approaches to education. Um, we both uh, utilize the foundation semester. Um, it's just been a really um, 
great start to a program. We've been able to learn a lot from um, the experiences at Middle College as we were getting on, uh, off the ground and some of the sports that I have through the national network have been able to uh, assist Frank. So it's just been a really positive environment for students. Uh, as far as graduates go, <coughs> Omi is actually uh, uh, scheduled to graduate in December. Um, we have three other graduates on, uh, on schedule to graduate at the end of this semester. We had two in our first semester. Uh, one enrolled full-time here at BCC, the other was accepted but had to take a semester off and is coming in the spring, been working with her actually, advising her, uh, getting her back into the, uh, the, the, the BCC uh, pipeline, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So it's just been, uh, it's been really uh, a promising start to, I think, what can really grow um, you know, throughout the region to provide another pathway to educational success for for students that have disengaged uh, with their education for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. Now both of the programs work closely with the local public schools, Fall River Public Schools, mm -hmm. New Bedford yes. Public Schools, uh, <clears throat> because it must be difficult to initially identify students who have left school that may be interested in coming back. How has that been, and both of you answer this, Frank maybe you can start, how, how has this relationship been and is it been relatively easy to get students to become involved in the program? Well, Bedford High School really embraced the program, so it began with a, a strong team of Bristol Community College and New Bedford High School people working together to make it happen. Um, our strongest liaison has been Bernadette Coelho. She's the, um, she's the recovery officer at New Bedford High School who looks for students who have left high school to try and get them in back into you know, other programs or back into high school. Uh, she's been amazing and she really was the catalyst for getting us started. Um, also, their, uh, New Bedford runs a night diploma program, mm -hmm. so they were able to give us some of our first students because our first cohort was actually a night cohort. Okay. Uh, we run both day and evening classes. Mm -hmm. um, since then, however, the students themselves have been a huge catalyst, word of mouth. Mm -hmm. um, they've been bringing in friends, they've been, you know, they let people know, people let people know, and it's, the word of mouth in New Bedford has been very strong for this program. Eric, how about Fall River? Um, Fall River, I mean, I think any successful program is, uh, is, is founded on a strong partnership with a host uh, public school or host school district. And I can't say enough about the Fall River Public Schools. They've been supported from the top down. Uh, we work hand in hand with uh, not only Durfee High School, but also Resiliency Preparatory mm -hmm. uh, School. Um, that is the alternative, another alternative high school in Fall River, uh, and we work very closely with uh, Amy Bronhard uh, in guidance at uh, Durfee and Lindsay Florent, who's a guidance counselor at RPS. Uh, you know, working to get students that uh, that are currently enrolled who are at risk. Uh, to, to consider Gateway as a, as a, as a possibility. Uh, and then they also help us uh, recruit outside. Um, they get a lot of referrals, students that want to re-engage, uh, and this is just another option. So um, it's just been a really great partnership uh, working with the Fall River Public Schools, and, and the passion on both sides has just really kind of driven this program to get students to succeed. Let's speak to the students now. Patrick, let me start with you. You're in Middle College in New Bedford. Uh, first of all, what led you to leave school at the, at the time when you were in high school? Well, um, at the time when I was in school, there were somewhat a little problems with other students, and um, not in particular ones that I liked, so I just kind of backed out of New Bedford High School. I wasn't really feeling the situations there. Um, I just wasn't really the best environment for me at the time. Mm -hmm. um, I left, and I didn't hear about middle college for about six months, at that time, I was already in night school. Um, a friend of mine told me that there was a good program going on at uh, BCC downtown, told me about the orientation. Um, soon after I met Frank, he, uh, me and him were actually both new on the same day, um, told me about the program, and soon after he got me in, and I've been liking it ever since. How long have you been in the program? About, this is my second year. Second year, when, when is graduation, hopefully? Um, I'm gonna be there for a little bit. Okay, well that's, that's good. Uh, maybe a year. What, what about it, what about this program has gotten you more interested in, in getting your degree and being educated? What do you like about it? The teachers, um, my fellow classmates, everyone's just eager to teach and learn. You know, um, it's always a good setting to come to. Um, every time I come to school, I just put, you know, I just, it's a very good experience. I, I love it. I love the teachers. I love, I love the work. I, I've never really had a drawback. Um, no negative things to say about it. Um, I'm, I keep going forward with every day that goes by. Now, um, are you now taking college uh, classes with other college students? Yes. Because you're out of that, that cohort 
foundation. He's actually in this foundation semester. He still is. Okay. Yes. Um, but they're college classes. Right. Right. Okay. And our, and our, our night classes are interesting because they are actually mixed. We open our night classes up to the community, to the campus community. Right. So there are both middle college students and uh, at large BCC students right. in the classes. Good. Omi, let me talk to you. What uh, What were the circumstances around you leaving leaving school at the time? Um, at the time, I had like problems at home and stuff, but. Um, and school was always, I was always put my school first priority. And so I just came here at, at Gateway, finding a new challenge and uh, knowing that it was at a college campus gave me more that maturity of continuing on and doing great in school. So you've actually been on this campus, the Fall River campus, for a little while now. What, again, we asked the same question I asked Patrick. What about it do you like? What about it is different from your high school experience? I like um, that it's, like, like I said, it was more mature and you get your freedom. You're on a co college campus and uh, you get your experience around campus. I love the teachers. They help you. There's tutoring. There's a lot of help around, like in high school. Um, even though I have help, it's here is like more maturity. Mm. Now, according to Eric, you're mm -hmm. hopefully graduating yeah. this this uh, spring, yes. all right? Hopefully she's going to graduate. <laughs> she's Good. Graduate. Good. Let, let me ask. Let me ask you. Um, what are your plans for after graduation? I already got accepted here for uh, criminal justice. Good for you. And. Um, I can't wait to start that. <laughs> and that'll be next fall. So you yep. No, actually, spring. It, she's actually starting this spring. Yep. Good for you. <laughs> Thanks. That's one thing that's been uh, really valuable, not only our partnership with the Fall River Public Schools, but the campus itself has really um, supported us uh, in, in, make, in helping make these students successful. Uh, we've worked with counseling services. We've worked with the Office of Admissions, the Registrar's Office. Um, Office of Disability Services. I mean, I could go, I could list every single department um, on campus, and it's just they've really just their their mission. They put their their the, the mission first, and and that is to to help students. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's just been a really positive experience. Now, one of the benefits that you both must see is that um, students coming in must see this as a, a different level because, you, as, as you said, Frank. In some of these, these, even in these foundation classes, when they're, they're together, that they're also still integrated with other college students. So there must be that level of maturity that these students see, and that can only be a positive in rubbing off on, on, on their learning sure, experience. Absolutely. And they want that. They embrace that. They like the opportunity. I've had more than one student say, I like that the choice is mine now to succeed or fail, and I'll make that choice. I like that responsibility. I like being trusted with that. I've heard comments like that. So yeah, definitely. Now let me ask the both of you, um, January is a, a new year and the two programs you run also run on a similar semester type system as, as BCC. Do you, do you both have any openings for this coming semester in, in January? Yeah, we do. Okay. Actually we have, right now we have um, about six applicants that are sure to enter in January and we have room for, for several more up, up to maybe possibly as many as 15. Mm -hmm. We're in the heart of our recruitment season for uh, the spring semester. Um, we, we're working uh, again with the, the Fall River Public Schools. Uh, we're testing, we're bringing in, uh, we're accepting applications. We're bringing on 22 new students in the, uh, for the spring cohort. Um, and we'll have some continuing students on campus as well. So it's a busy time of year mm -hmm. for everyone. And, and one thing that, that we should know is that uh, if you are interested in applying to either of these two programs, you need to do so early January. Um, the semester actually begins around the 23rd of January, I believe. Is, is so, But there is an application process and an interview process. So if you're watching this program in early January, uh, please um, apply and you're interested. Please apply as soon as possible. And how can people, Frank, find out more information about the Middle College program in New Bedford? They can call our office. They can call the Middle College office at the New Bedford campus. They could send an email to Middle College at at bristolcc.edu. They can even go to our Facebook page and click on the application link. What's the extension for the college phone number there? Uh, 3741. 3741. And Eric, how about Fall River? Uh, pretty much the same thing. Uh, you can call us up, uh, extension 2557. You can check us out on Facebook. Um, we also uh, have a, a web college website page. 
um, or you can contact your uh, the follower school district and they can get you in touch with us mm -hmm. so. and and you know even if there are not any slots available for this coming spring semester if you have any questions the cohorts will be continuing in the fall of, of, of 2013 so please uh, feel free to contact these two gentlemen and find out more information about how you can get back uh, to furthering and completing your education so Eric, Frank, Patrick, Omi, thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. Best of luck, especially to you two. Thanks. And you two as well. <laughs> thank you for joining. We appreciate it. Thanks for having us. We'll have more of Around BCC right after this. Welcome back. There are some exciting new initiatives at BCC's campus in downtown New Bedford, thanks in part to support from the private sector. BCC is once again working with higher education partners to expand educational opportunities for students in Greater New Bedford. The college last month cut the ribbon on the new Health Sciences Suite located on the second floor of the eHealth building on Purchase Street. Patricia Dent, Dean of Health Sciences, says the new space has made it possible for many programs to expand and evolve by providing active learning experiences using cutting-edge technologies. Students learn best in environments that represent real-world practice. With that in mind, our faculty were instrumental in working with the design teams to create learning environments that truly best represent their professional practice. They spent countless hours researching and selecting equipment and instructional resources that are truly state-of-the-art. The college also announced that higher education partners will fund scholarships for those working in the human service and early childhood education fields to upgrade their skills by earning a degree or certificate. Higher Education Partners President Jerry Cavanaugh says it makes sense for his organization to invest in these workforce development opportunities. We get to take a little of our resources and reinvest them into the students so that number one, students can think about getting a degree. Secondly, they won't have problems paying back their debt because hopefully we've relieved them of some of that debt. And thirdly, once they get through, they'll be able to get a new job in their existing workplace and have a higher salary with uh, nicer benefits and a, and a uh, more fruitful career. Through this partnership, students can earn a scholarship worth up to 50% of the cost of two classes taken in either early childhood education or human services. For more information, please contact BCC's New Bedford campus. The spring semester often brings unique course offerings for students looking to take classes that are out of the mainstream. Some of these were spotlighted at a spring course fair held last semester. Academic departments and clubs assembled late last semester to introduce students to some of the educational opportunities available to them for this spring semester. Course fair organizer Chris Ann Souza says the event is a chance for students to learn about some interesting classes they would not otherwise have known about. Some of the other interesting things are the learning communities that we have. Um, actually, there's an iPad pilot program this semester where students who combine 101, excuse me, English 102 and History 112, a particular grouping, um, will be provided with an iPad for the semester. It's part of a learning community a pilot program. So that's a pretty exciting opportunity. And what we're finding out as faculty at, at BCC is what happens when everyone has equal technology, access to this kind of technology. So the iPads are incorporated into the classroom. So that's um, another offering. Of course, kids are finding out about various clubs. Uh, there's a new um, Shakespeare course and uh, world literature courses and all kinds of stuff being offered at the fair. Even though the semester starts up later this month, there are still a variety of intriguing offerings for students who have yet to fill up their spring schedule. This spring we'll see the continuation of events sponsored by the college's Multicultural Committee, celebrating the diversity that surrounds BCC. It's the third academic year that the college's Multicultural Committee has organized programs 
to give students a different perspective in appreciating our varied cultures. Committee co-chair Robert Rosendi says there are a number of events slated for this spring. For the spring, we usually have a pretty robust um, a number of events for the month of February. Um, we have our opening ceremony that will for African American History Month, which will be on February 1st, as well as um, the readings that we do at all three campuses. Um, we have a speaker coming in from Brown University, Dr. Corey Walker, who will be doing uh, a presentation that revolves, talks a little bit about the 50th anniversary of the uh, uh, march in Washington with Dr. Martin Luther King. To find out more information on the Multicultural Committee's offerings, please visit the BCC website. BCC was recently awarded a grant to expand the college's disability services capabilities here at the Fall River campus. The Fall River Commission on Disabilities presented BCC with a $6,000 grant to purchase two evacuation chairs to help remove mobility-challenged individuals from the second floor of campus buildings in the event of an emergency. Commission Vice Chair Dennis Polselli says money for the program comes through the collection of fines from city vehicles parked illegally in handicapped spots. So with that money, we are able to um, support and help with the city's compliance with the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, and we're also able to um, help organizations. In the past, we've helped the city of Fall River's veteran service agents. Um, they have since, um, uh, we provided a handicap ramp exit to the Pine Street building. We are assisting the Fall River Public Library through our donations uh, in reaching out and providing services to persons with disabilities. And of course, right here at Bristol Community College with the back chair that you're about to see demonstrated in a couple of minutes. And as President Sprager pointed out, there was some leftover money to assist with classroom services for students who are deaf and hard of hearing in the form of C-print captioning. With this purchase, the college now has three evacuation chairs on campus with the goal of stationing one in each building in the near future. If you've ever lost a treasured item, you know how good it feels if the item is found. Well, one man found the class ring of a BCC alum and persevered in making sure it was returned. Casper has been metal detecting since 1975 and has made a practice of returning valuables he finds to their rightful owners. About four years ago, while scouring the sand at Second Beach in Newport, it came upon a BCC ring from the class of 1982. The ring was garnished with the initials CHF. At that point, I tried contacting the, the college and I uh, contacted the wrong office, I guess, and I couldn't get much help in returning it. So over the years, I've kept trying and trying and trying, and I told my girlfriend I was trying one more time. I sent emails out to everybody on their website, hoping that somebody would direct me in the right direction to find out the owner of this ring. And luckily, I got a hold of the right department with the alumni, and they returned my call and said they thought they had the owner. And from there, um, Jane Ash uh, took over and has been corresponding with me in the last few months, hoping to contact uh, the family and to make this return. The BCC Alumni Office was able to track the ring back to Charles H. Fallows, an alum who spent a good portion of his time at area beaches. Unfortunately, the 70-year-old Fallows has a terminal illness and cannot be on hand to retrieve his ring. His wife Marie, his daughters and grandchildren did accept the ring on his behalf. It's unbelievable. I can't believe they had found it from so long ago. Um, I didn't know he had it. We've been married 10 years together, 14, but he was a swimmer and um, I can see that it was found on the beach, but he would love this. He was a very outgoing man and to have Alzheimer's and he's not speaking at this point right now. Um, he would love this and that's the only reason I'm doing this because this is not me and his daughters too. Uh, I know they're very happy to. He may smile when he sees that. He does remember things from the past. That's one happy ending for an alum from 1982. But now we look at a more recent graduate who took her culinary art skills and established her own local business in the latest edition of Alumni in Your Community. Hi, I'm Gina Perry, BCC class of 2011. I grew up in Johnston, Rhode Island. 
Um, I graduated from Johnson High School and um, I actually did not cook or bake much growing up. My mother did all the cooking. Um, she was a single mom, so um, it was kind of, always kind of like on the go, uh, a little bit rushed. But uh, I got interested in baking and cooking once I, once I got married. Right after I graduated, I met my husband, who was from Bristol, Rhode Island. And, uh, and shortly after, I moved to Bristol, and then we were married. I was working at the time in retail for Verizon Wireless. Um, and then we decided to start a family. So I had my first son. And uh, once he was born, I decided to stay at home and not go back to work. So I was home with him and then my second son for probably about six or seven years. And it was while I was home um, that I started cooking more naturally for my family. And I baked my older son's first birthday cake. And that was kind of where it all started. I started baking cakes for friends and family, and I found that I really enjoyed it. Um, I really enjoyed art when I was in high school. I even considered going into art after high school, but there wasn't much opportunity in the art world then. Like there is now, there wasn't the graphic design, wasn't at quite as big, and um, I decided to go into, into retail at the time. That's kind of where, where life led me, but finally I found myself back to um, an artistic way of uh, expressing myself through baking and cakes and cake design. I started baking cakes for friends and family, like I said, and um, slowly it started to grow. I started doing cakes for friends of friends and then friends of friends of friends. And um, I decided that if I wanted to seriously consider this for a career option, I wanted to be educated not just in cake design, but also in the rest of the world of the pastry arts. I wanted to learn how to make doughs and pies and croissants and danishes and, and everything else. So the easiest way for me to do that was to naturally get go, go to culinary school. And I found um, there were a few options in Rhode Island of, um, you know, Johnson and Wales, of course, is a great school. But once, I, once somebody directed me to BCC, um, I decided that was the more logical choice because it was far less expensive. And, um, and I'm an older student, so I wanted to be among peers. Um, and, uh, and once I visited the campus at BCC, I definitely felt like that was going to be a good fit. So I started taking some night classes to get some prerequisites and eventually started the, the uh, two-year pastry art program. I felt like my education from BCC was very thorough. We started with you know the science of baking. We went through bread classes, different um, cookies, cakes, of course, and we went right through everything from, from A to Z. Um, as far as baking and pastry arts, and I felt like it definitely gave me the basis, uh, a good foundation for um, everything in the pastry world, so I could kind of take it and grow and expand with what I was taught there. I knew when I started um, college that I eventually wanted to open up a shop of my own. Um, it was definitely kind of a goal that I had in mind, and once I graduated, I did spend a summer uh, working for a caterer and eventually started my business plan for the sweet shop um, and it didn't take very long to find a location. I did want to find something in Bristol where I, where I live but um, ultimately found a perfect spot here in Barrington um, and it was kind of the timing was right. We found the perfect size and price location so we decided to go forward and open up shop. We opened up about nine months ago, and since then I've definitely learned a lot about the business world. I do feel like I was definitely more prepared from BCC because there was a business course included in the culinary um, program that had us create a virtual restaurant or bakery in my case, and I actually had some insight into what went into opening the shop. And then once I opened, um, it was definitely an adjustment for my family and I to get used to me working longer hours, later hours, sometimes crazy hours. Um, but now that we've kind of, I would say once we're about six months into it, we definitely found a groove and a, a, a nice rhythm. So between my husband and I, we can, you know, manage the kids and their schedule and, and our busy work schedule. So it took a little while, but we finally found a good balance. I strongly feel that if I had opened up the shop before getting my education at BCC, um, it would have been much, much more difficult to have the type of shop that I own today. Um, we're a specialty shop. We create 90% of our cakes are custom order cakes, and sometimes customers have strange requests. They would like, you know, a bouche de Noël for Christmas or a Dobosh tour for a family member because they can't find one anywhere else. And being with the education that I have, I've I've done a little bit of everything. So it definitely helps me offer my customers more of a wider variety, and. Um, and understanding just the baking process and being able to create the types of recipes that we want to 
offer here in the shop, different flavors and different flavor combinations. So I definitely feel like I was better prepared and it wouldn't have been nearly as easy to, to do this without the education from BCC. That's all for Around BCC this month. I'm Keith Tebow. Thanks for watching.